Welcome to the Water Valley Winchel Lake Area Structure Plan Open House pre-recording session. I am Don Lashmar, public member and chair of the committee, and I will be your host. Before we dive into the presentation, I would like to introduce the county's administration from the Planning and Development Department, who provide all the technical support needed for the review of this area structure plan. They're Jessica Ross, Assistant Director of Planning and Development. Dulu Mary Gonzalez and Camilo Conde are both planners and Lynn Craven, Administrative Assistant. Now I will ask the Vice Chair to introduce the Steering Committee members. Hello, my name is Ari Almadi. I'm the Vice Chair for this area structure plan review. I'm pleased to introduce my other fellow committee members who've all been working on this area structure plan review. Nolan Aldred, public, public member. Lauren Patmo, Water Valley Community Association. Greg Harris, the Division Two Councillor. Dwayne Fulton, Division One Councillor. And Alan Miller, Division Three Councillor. Thank you, Aria, for the introduction. The information from this pre-recorded session will be the same information being presented at the open house on March 26th from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Water Valley Community Centre. The presentation will cover the following topics. Number one, what is an area structure plan and why are we reviewing the Water Valley area Winchell Lake ASP? Timelines and how to participate. Three is key principles. Four is the land use concept key changes and key policies. Five is recreational development and six is next steps. Now I will hand it over to Councillor Harris who explained to us what an area structure plan is and why the Water Valley Winchell Lake area structure plan is being reviewed. Hello everyone, my name is Greg and as you heard, I'm the division two counselor which includes the Water Valley and Winchell Lake area. An area structure plan or ASP is a policy document that covers a specific area and it's used by the county when evaluating redesignation, subdivision and development applications. If you have land within an ASP, you will want to be familiar with this document. ASPs are ultimately approved by council and to keep these documents up to date, they're reviewed from time to time. The current Water Valley and Winchell Lake ASP started its review in 2009 and was adopted in 2013, making it about 11 years old. Due to its geographic location, the community has become increasingly popular and this is resulting in greater demands for rural living and services. The ASP review is future focused document, which takes into consideration the current needs and demands of the community while maintaining the character and historic nature of Water Valley. Thanks, Councillor Harris. Nolan, could you summarize where we are in the review process? County Council approved the review of the Water Valley Winter Lake ASP as part of the, 20, the county's 2023 budget, and the steering committee started the process of reviewing the document in April 2023. From April to January of this year, the committee reviewed the key principles, drafted policy pertaining to residential, commercial and recreational developments, along with revising the future land use concept map. We are now at the step in the process where the steering committee wants to share with the community these proposed changes and ask for your input on the proposed revisions. This ne the next step in this process for the steering committee is to gather the comments from the online comment form and the open house, evaluate them and decide if further changes are needed for, to draft the ASP. The final step in the process will be to present the revisions to council for their consideration. There is a formal approval process which will include a public hearing. Nolan, you talked about community input. Can you tell us how the community can participate in this process? For sure, Don. The community's participation is key in the review process as the input we receive will help to inform the steering committee's development of the area structure plan. There are a few options for community members to participate. First is to attend the open house on March 26th and fill in a comment sheet. The other is to fill out the online comment sheet that is posted on the county's website, or there's always the option to contact Olu at the county office for more information or to submit comments after the open house via email or in person. Thank you for the explanation, Nolan. Aria, can you explain the key principles and what they are? This slide shows the key principles, which are the pillars or the basis of the policies within the ASP. The steering committee spent many meetings reviewing and amending these key principles in order to achieve what we think is important for the community. 
The key principles are divided into various categories, include agriculture, the environment, the ruler character of the community, residential acreage development, natural resource extraction, recreation, and transportation. Just to recap, the key principles are the foundation of the policies, which in the end will determine where development and subdivision may be appropriate. In addition to the key principles are also the baseline for the development of the future land use concept that Nolan is going to explain to us. Thanks, Arya. Before I explain the future land use concept, I want to pause here. I think one of the biggest misconceptions when we talk about future land use is that people immediately think that their land zoning is going to change. I want to reassure everyone that this is not the case. It is important to understand that this future concept in, is in general terms, what we as the steering committee have visualized in terms of where development could take place in the future if a landowner would like to develop the land. We took into consideration the key principles that Aria just introduced, including the present needs of the community, and determined that the commercial corridor along Highway 579 is important, and it should continue to remain, as it provides services to the community. The other factor that was considered is the increased pressure with people wanting to move to the rural areas to escape the urban environment experience of rural lifestyle. The future land use concept plan provides two different areas to allow for acreage development. Medium density residential could be appropriate along main roads like the highway, Range Road 52 and Jack Eby Trail. And the re remaining area would be for low density residential development. There are exceptions as there are quarter sections that are at their limit or exceeded the maximum allowable parcel density. So for those quarter sections, there is no possibility of further subdividing. Thanks Nolan for this explanation. Councillor Harris, for a person who may not be, who may not very be very familiar with the current ASP, can you please explain the main differences between the current ASP and what is being proposed by the steering committee? Yeah, thanks, Don. Uh, perhaps one of the most significant changes is that the area is now identified by county council as a growth center within the county. This means that the community is a place that can consider greater development options compared to other areas in the county. For this reason, the agricultural preservation policies have been changed to low density development policies. A change recommended by the steering committee was the removal of the high density policies that were concentrated around the four way stop. Instead, the committee recommends that the best way to allow diverse subdivision potential is to expand the medium density policies. Understanding that transportation and access is an important component for development the steering committee expanded the medium density to areas adjacent to main access corridors within the plan area. The final change is the deletion of areas identified specifically for potential recreational development. Instead of pointing out in the future land use concept specific areas where recreation may happen, the steering committee recognized the unique nature of the lands within Water Valley and Winchell Lake and have, having specific areas identified for recreational development may be a challenge. There are many deciding factors to whether recreational development is appropriate or not, and therefore the community decided to build into the policies a criteria to evaluate future recreational development proposals within the plan area. Thank you, Councillor Harris, for the explanation between current versus proposed concepts. Now we want to dig a little bit more into the proposed land use concept to understand what a landowner could potentially do on their land. Aria, could you please explain the neighborhood commercial to us? This is one of the land use concepts that the steering committee decided to keep. So there will be no changes other than to realize that the community experiences, as the community experiences growth, it needs to provide services. If you want people to stay for this reason, the key principle reads, recognize and respect the rural heritage of the area while balancing the needs for the future development. Currently, the area offers some level of services and has great access via Highway 579. The committee's vision is to see this area continue to expand and provide services alike. With that in mind, any commercial development that needs to com complement the area and provide adequate access, parking facilities, landscapes, signage, and a servicing strategy. Arya, before we jump into the next land use concept, can you briefly explain what a, is a servicing strategy? 
I think the best way to explain a servicing strategy is by using an example. Let's say you want to open a restaurant that has a maximum capacity of 50 people. The servicing strategy in this scenario is that Don's restaurant is required to have an adequate septic system for washrooms as well as adequate and sufficient water for human consumption. A servicing strategy explains the use of water and wastewater for the restaurant and is a key component in the development of a commercial business. That makes sense. Moving on to the draft residential changes, Nolan, can you explain the changes to low density development? Low density is the area on this map that has a green color. In terms of development, the low density will allow a maximum of three additional parcels of land often re referred to as titles. This could be either to, to create smaller agricultural parcels, residential parcels, or a combination of both as long as there are no more than three subdivisions and the remaining land would be considered the fourth, fourth title. For example, if a landowner wants to create a small agricultural zone parcel, the size should be a minimum of 40 acres. But if the same landowner, for example, wants to create residential zone parcels, then the minimum size is three acres to a maximum of 15 acres per parcel. Let's see if I understand this, Nolan. Let's say I own a 60 acre parcel and there is another acreage in the same quarter section of land. In total, there are three titles with the remaining land. Can I subdivide my 60-acre parcel? Yes, Don. In your scenario, there's a potential for one more subdivision to bring it to the maximum of four parcels per quarter section. Thank you, Nolan. I also want to say that the steering committee identified two quarter sections on the map with red circles that have previously been subdivided many, many years ago with the intent to further subdivide the remaining land. To accommodate development in these two quarter sections, the committee agreed on allowing for the, the undeveloped portion within the quarter section shown in green to further develop as low density, therefore allowing for up to four additional titles within those portions of land. Aria, could you please explain to us the medium density changes? The medium density in the area identified on the map as pinkish. This is the area where the steering committee has allocated a higher capacity for acreage development with different sizes of parcels. We often hear that people want to have enough land so they can have a few animals and some areas for gardening. Therefore, medium density will allow up to 15 lots per quarter section with parcel sizes varying from three to 15 acres. However, it could also allow a smaller, smaller agricultural parcel with a minimum of 40 acres in size. From what I just heard, the medium density compared to the low density allows for more parcels. So for the sake of understanding, if I owned a quarter section identified as a medium density and want to develop that quarter section to its full potential, how can I proceed? I'm glad you asked this question because there's a lot of people that don't understand the difference between developing in a rural area versus developing in an urban area. To answer your question, you will be required to prepare a concept plan showing the internal layout of the 15 parcel and how the area will be serviced. Mountain View County, including Water Valley, don't have water or wastewater connections, so the developer is required to provide water and wastewater for each of these lots in a hypothetical scenario. The developer will incur the expenses for the studies to provide services up front to the cost of the construction of the internal road, upgrading intersections, and construction of stormwater ponds, and the provisions of electricity, gas services to the property lines. There may be other requirements, but it depends on where the land is located. Thank you for the explanation, Aria. Over the last couple of years, the county has seen many inquiries about recreational development. I'll ask committee member Lauren Patmore if he can explain recreational development within the plan. You're absolutely right, Don. The county and this area specifically have been sought in the past years for recreational development. I feel like I'm biased because as an area resident, I feel this area is very beautiful. Let's face it, the topography, the landscape, the proximity to the Rocky Mountains and to Calgary makes Water Valley an ideal location for recreation use. On the other hand, there's a lot of us that live here and want the peace and quiet and do not want that to change. So finding a balance for the community is key and developing policies to assist in determining whether a recreational pop proposal is appropriate is very important. So how can the area structure plan balance the needs of these two segments of the population, the ones that want to recreate, recreate here and the ones that want to live here? Councillor Harris? 
Please, Don, call me Greg. To try and balance this, the steering committee decided not to designate areas for recreational development in the future land use concept map. If you see in the map, these are all the existing recreational facilities that have recreational zoning currently. They're everywhere. They're not concentrated in a particular area. So the steering committee wants to take the same approach. And instead of indicating on a map where recreational development may or may not take place, we develop guidelines that allow the prospect of recreational development anywhere within the plan area where they may demonstrate minimal impact to the community. An application for recreational development will be required to rezone a property to Parks and Recreation District. Also, we will require the preparation of a concept plan with technical studies that may include transportation impact assessment, geotechnical reports, stormwater management plans, biophysical assessments, groundwater evaluation supply, and a servicing study. Thank you, Greg. This concludes our presentation for the proposed changes made by the steering committee to the Water Valley Wincho Lake Area Structure Plan. Please submit your comments no later than Friday, April 12th. You can also contact Dolu Gonzalez at the county office directly if you have any questions. All of the comments received will be provided to the steering committee for review at a future meeting. The committee may choose to make additional changes, and when the draft is acceptable, the committee will recommend that council consider the ASP through the formal process that will include giving first reading of the bylaw and scheduling a public hearing, including a further second and third reading for the changes to be adopted. All landowners residing in the plan area will receive a notice of the public hearing date and can provide comments to be included on the council agenda and also address council during the public hearing process. After the public hearing concludes, council will make a decision on that bylaw that might include further changes before approving the new area structure plan. On behalf of the steering committee, we want to thank you in advance for your input on this plan and would love to see all of you at the Water Valley Community Hall on March 26th for the open house.